there really is no place in Seattle that isn't worth painting. There's always something in the landscape that's giving a narrative to the location. Not just the buildings, but the garbage, the graffiti, the way the space is used gives it a wonderful narrative. It's a bit like doing a portrait. You paint Seattle and you can make it about what the lighting is at sunset. But if you really pay attention, it's a living organism. It's constantly changing. That idea of documenting, in a way, is not documenting, it's meditating on the place. I go to a location, I don't know why I chose it. Something catches my eye. I want to discover what it's saying. And painting it is what helps me know why. I like telling stories. My actual degree is in theater. I didn't think of it as becoming an artist at all in my life. But when I went to college and I thought, you know, I'm gonna take an art class. And I took the drawing class and I flunked. And he was like, well, if you come back to class, make it up, I will change your grade. And I did. The result of that is they offered me a scholarship Something happened in graduate school that I didn't realize at the time was a moment for me. I was doing a portrait of a model and then the model had to leave. What I ended up doing is painting the model out of the painting and just painting the room that the model was in. And so people knew more about that person with them not being in the painting because they paid attention to all the extra stuff, all of the details of the room. And when I started painting landscapes, made a connection. It became not about the atmosphere of capturing the light of this moment, but what is the personality of this moment. My painting process is really quite layered, at least I'd say three layers of color as I go towards detail, and general to specific. As I do the second layer, it's gonna look more realistic. <laughs> I'm trying to, to put layers so that when someone looks at it, if that person that's at the gallery and sees it and they're uh, construction mogul creating the buildings downtown. They go, oh, look at, he's captured the things that I've been creating. But I also want the person that was on that street and eating a bag of Doritos to go, hey, those are the Doritos I, I threw in the gutter. I want the person that did the graffiti to go, oh yeah, that, that's me. I'm in there as well. I'm hoping that the end result of that layering really is inclusive. One of the most exciting aspects of having a realist painter who works at the level of Michael Stasnos is the excitement that people feel when they see his work. I think it's awesome. This looks so real like I don't know like the scenery jumped out <laughs> into the canvas and he's just putting the finishing touches on it, it just looks magnificent like wow 
you can be 50 feet away from this and it hails you from that far away. And as they get closer to the painting, they realize how minute the details are in this and they will stand in front of this painting for 10 or 15 minutes just to see the level of work, which is absolutely incredible. I think that art is my drug. I go through withdrawals and I get kind of antsy and upset if I am not doing it. It is a way that I'm able to connect to the world that um, <laughs> I don't think I can connect in any other way. It's so meaningful for me. I think that's what painting does for me. It's a way of connecting. See more of Michael's work at michaelstasinos.com and at his Seattle gallery, Woodside Braceth, located near the Harbor Steps on Western Avenue. Catch Art Zone Friday nights at 8 and anytime online at seattlechannel.org slash artzone.